Today, I'm at Harvard Law School, about to talk with the students here, and my goal is to urge them to set aside the assignments that they have and think about assigning themselves the crafting of a meaningful life. What kind of story do they really want to tell? Something that's really from their hearts as well as from their minds, and something that might actually help the world a bit. I am here for you now, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. That's always the best part of these sessions, or the questions that come from you on any subject I've talked about or not. Yes? Thank you again, Mr. Barron. Um, so it seems like you, like many of us, came from a very structured environment, Princeton, Oxford, Harvard, Harvard. Um, in your creative pursuits, do you think that helped you or hindered you? And if it did hinder you, how did you overcome that? And if it helped you, how? Excellent question. That's, that's really, the question is, does formal education often hinder us as much as help us? I think it does. It certainly was that way for me. I'll put it this way. The most important thing I learned during um, the first year at Harvard Business School was how to play the guitar. Uh, it's true. The f and, and the most important thing I learned during my first year at Harvard Law School was that I was probably not going to make it onto the Supreme Court. <laughs> and then I started rummaging around in the world around me to figure out, okay, what really am I going to do? And that's when I began to ask, okay, what do I really care about? That process, together with a real, just a dose of your own mortality, I, I think you really do have to look, not in a morbid way, but look at your life as a, as a time capsule. You have a chance to direct. It's energy, it's time energy and it's your soul's energy, but it's really up to you. If you just take the assignments or the incentives, the carrots that are held out there by XYZ corporations, they may be wonderful folks, but if they don't really meet your inner desires of what you want to do with your life, you have to, have to go deeper. Thanks for asking. Who else has a question? Now, you have a question. Um, you talked about stories as a vehicle for ideas. Yeah. Um, I was interested to know if how those relate to each other. Does normally when you write, does the idea come first and you decide that you need to create a story to tell that idea? Do you have characters in your mind already that they just happen to be telling this idea that you've always wanted to get across? Or if it might be a chicken and the egg problem, but I'm just curious about how those things relate to each other. <laughs> Where do stories come from? is really the question, and, and I'll give you a top-level answer, and then I'm going to give you a deeper-level answer. The top-level answer is, it's different for every writer, but for me, I know to, get, to just get the, the glacial energy moving forward, even at a slow pace, to write something serious, I need to have three elements. I need to have a character I really care about, a place that's magical enough, interesting enough, diverse enough that I want to go there and really be there. And by the way, to me, places are not just a backdrop for a story, they're really another form of character. They have to have all the, all the complexity and subtlety and, and contradictions that a human character would have. And sudden storms to boot. And then the third is that idea, a real question about whatever, free will, about about how can humanity live with our fellow species in peace, about what real difference does one person's life make, even one lone young person. Questions like that. I, if I have all three of those, then something starts to happen. In whatever form it takes for you as a writer, or you as a writer, or any of you who work with the imagery and, and metaphor of words and language, and you're lucky, by the way, it's an exquisite, anguish words. For any of you, it's going to be different for each, of, each one of you, but this must apply, I think. And by the way, I think this is, applies to every creative enterprise. Writing a symphony, doing, doing a, designing a beautiful building like this one, crafting a novel, all of those things. You have to somehow engage both halves of your brain. You have to engage 
the left half, which is connected to your right hand, the part of the brain that is more logical, more rational, more directed in its, in its thinking patterns. You also have to engage the right half of your brain that's connected to the left hand. That's the part of our brain that deals in metaphor. It's the part of the brain that writes poetry. It's the part of the brain that, that um, thinks in incomplete sentences that creates imagery and metaphor that, that convey a whole lot more than all the detailed prose you can imagine. Another question. We had a question over here. Yes. So I was wondering, um, when you transitioned from um, your life before uh, devoting yourself to writing, yeah. what did you find now that you gained or that you use in your writing from your time at the private equity firm or from law school? Or That's a great question. The question is, what did I bring from my life before into my life as a writer? That phraseology, by the way, sounds like it was a, there was a curtain. And, and uh, you know, the Wizard of Oz is behind there, and he's, it's really not as amazing as, it, as you might expect. But the truth is, everything in life is experience that you can use. And, and I, actually, I actually believe that, and this might sound strange coming from somebody who writes fantasy and imaginary realms, uh, I think that the best material, absolutely the best, whatever kind of work you do, is real life. And it's about noticing really, really well what's around you. We, we, um, we tend to, we tend to um, think of fantasy as, as something other and reality as this. Or even fiction as something else and nonfiction as, that, as something different. The, but I think the truth is more complicated than that. Good fiction, if it's done well, must be true. It's just not true on the factual level. It's true on the emotional level. It's true on the spiritual level. It's true in what it evokes in the idea level. So, so, but it starts with noticing. I mean, really noticing, which begins with your senses. It also begins with getting deeper into, into the minds and hearts of people around you and imagining what their motivations are, what their, what their contradictions are, what their deepest fears are, what their highest hopes are, their aspirations, their struggles. And, and, and so what I'm really saying is, to be a good writer, I think, requires being all present and aware as much as you humanly can. And then you have a lot of great material to work with. So even if you're, even if you're in the New York financial world, I, I, I met, believe me, some amazing characters. Uh, and if you want to know where some of the trolls or ogres came from in my <laughs> stories, I, I could easily point you to a few of them. Um, and by the way, a few elves and wizards too. A couple of giants, several dwarfs. <laughs> so I think you get the idea. And let me add one last thing. Here's the secret. If you have a job description that means you need to notice life more fully to be part of it, whatever comes of your, your writing product, you have the great gift of having a job that means you'll be more alive while you're doing it. So whatever you do, notice well, because it'll, it gives you a more fully enriched experience every day that you live. It's a, it's, a, it's a great thing. So it'll empower you whatever directions you choose to take. Who else in this room has, has tried his or her hand at writing? Uh, there are at least a few of you writers. Riley, I know you, and back over here. Well, let me just tell you the wisest words ever spoken to me about writing. And I suppose it has to do with life as well. It was by a marvelous writer uh, whose name is Madeline Lengel, who wrote a book called A Wrinkle in Time that I bet many of you have read and enjoyed. I certainly have many times. Madeline looked me right in the eye over dinner once when I was really struggling with my uh, first novel. She said, Tom, you realize there are three essential rules to writing the perfect novel. I dropped my fork. 
I, it was, I literally dropped my fork and, and uh, bent over the plate of spaghetti and said, okay, tell me, please. She said, three essential rules. Unfortunately, she continued, nobody knows what they are. <laughs> so that's all the wisdom I have to impart uh, uh, about, about writing. Thank you all again for assembling today. And let me just urge you one more time. Do think of your life as a story. Think of it as your personal authorship and tell a great one. I can tell you will. Thank you.